So this video is um, is a repair of the rear of the 2009 Dodge Ram Laramie Crew Cab uh, rear driver side rear door where the lock does not the central locking system um, does not operate the rear that door this particular door is, door is locked so if I try to lock it it just doesn't go anywhere it was actually uh, kind of working partially sometimes it was working sometimes it wasn't working now it's entirely um, inoperational so I'm gonna attempt to fix it so the first thing you want to do is you want to pop these um, push clips or push pins locking pins, um, you gotta remove them. Now they're just plastic push pins, uh, you do need a, a T15 uh, Torx to turn them counterclockwise to, uh, to remove them and it usually helps if you um, if you put your fingernail kind of wedge it between the head and the, uh, and the body of that push pin and then turn to, to help you help them come out because they are a little finicky if you, if you put too much pressure on them they won't come out so um, they are they, they are reassembled by just kind of pushing the, the head and the pin itself back in without you know screwing um, and also you have to get behind the handle and uh, remove this flap they just got like a little um, uh, retaining um, um, what do you call it? It's got a little retaining um, protrusion, I guess, to get that open and uh, get that screw out. So I get the screw out and the pins. I pull the pins out because they're easily lost. So I pull them out um, to kind of get them out of the way. Now you want to get in there and uh, and pry the panel out. And again, like I said, I just I want, that one just popped out, so I'm gonna have to find it. But um, they can these pins can be removed first ahead of time probably a good idea so they're not uh, you know jumping out and you're risking losing them so. the next thing you want to do is you want to remove this this pillar um, trim panel because um, it will be in a way of uh, it gets in the way of actually removing the, uh, the door panel which should come out just by lifting it up but I will have to figure that out still. So, like I said, the panel um, should be able to just lift it, lift it out with your hand. Now I have to put the camera down because uh, I need to um, operate the handle so I can remove the panel, and also I want to make sure that this clears. The um, the pin is probably a good idea to just push it in, so it so it comes comes out. And uh, I'm fiddling with the camera here, but there we go. Once removed, uh, you need to get to that connector for the door switch or the window switch which is down here which just releases um, normally uh, it actually comes out uh, somewhat like this so you can actually pull it out you can pull it out and then disconnect it um, as you can see it's just a couple of uh, retention clips should be able to easily come out I didn't want to pull it out initially because I wasn't sure how it's how it's in there but uh, there it is so the next thing we want to do is remove or disassemble all the hardware on this inner door panel so we can remove it and see what's going on inside. It's flanked with uh, these 10 millimeter head bolts. Um, there's a speaker that judging by the, uh, by the harness I'm going to have to remove. Um, I'm going to have to uh, uh, remove the uh, windshield motor and um, this uh, little lock um, I guess a drum that, that, that connects the uh, linkages for the for the lock um, as well as uh, the handle it's gonna have to 
be dis, dis, disconnected. These actually remove pretty easy. You just have to snap them out like this, and they they come right out. They can be um, you know disconnected. So all these kind of work the same way. And this, as you can see, once I remove these guys, I'll be able to rotate that drum to to actually take it off the panel. And uh, along with uh, whatever wiring, which I'll see inside once I get inside it. So uh, the speaker is actually held in place with these um, five millimeter hex uh, screws, which come out by hand. You don't need the just uh, tiny little small uh, um, hex, five millimeter, like I said, to get this out. Uh, it looks like the um, the windshield motor actually uses Torx uh, and it uses T25 size Torx. Uh, I'm hoping I don't have to uh, actually remove it. However, to remove the connector, you have to pull this red tab out first and then depress the release over here to get that out of the way. So it seems that I do need to remove the um, windshield, the window, because um, the window regulator is actually screwed into this this, this rigid panel. Um, so and the, and the screws are screwed in from the inside, so I can't remove the panel without removing the window because I have to make the uh, get the regulator loose. So what I did, uh, the way that you remove the regulator or the window is by there's there's a couple of tabs on each side where the window is in, when the window is engaged uh, into the, the carrier here if you press these tabs these, these kind of beige tabs in then the window will come out along with the beige part and then you can remove it uh, now in order to get to that uh, I can get to it on this side through the speaker hole once I get the uh, once I get the window down here however uh, on the other side as you can see it's a little tough getting the other tab on the other side because there is no hole. So it looks like Dodge purposely uh, created like a little access door, which is actually part of the panel. It's not loose; it can't be opened. So what I did is I actually used a knife, a box cutter, and I cut around the upper and the side edges so I can actually make that flap open, and that should enable me. This actually looks like a. Per this actually was done on purpose because there's a hole to access that other tab, retaining tab on this carrier on this side of the, the, the door. So I'm going to try to get that uh, window out and then see if I can get the panel off. So now I, I lowered the window to where both carriers are actually accessible and as you can see there's definitely uh, this was definitely purposely made in this spot so so you can uh, depress both tabs at the same time. It's going to be a little tricky because you got to there's two tabs on each side so I have to somehow you know release one side lift it up a little bit um, Put a screwdriver or something like that to prevent it from falling back down because they just kind of snap into place you know with the weight of the window so and then uh, work on the other side so it wasn't as hard as i thought it was going to be now i just have to remove those uh those those beige tabs which have a locating dowel on them uh you know pull it away from the window and then down to take them out The other side, I actually lifted the window up into this access panel that's in the door panel, and that's going to enable me to uh, to take that beige, uh, I guess, part of the carrier or saddle, whatever you want to call it, out. And just uh, comes right right out, just like that. So what I did is uh, I secured the windshield after I couldn't really pull it out. Um, not sure how to do it, but I just secured it with some tape. Make sure that it doesn't uh, get in my way. Now here there was a couple of linkages coming out of this hole and this hole one for the uh, latch or the handle, door handle. This one was for the um, uh, oh, right for the uh, for the um, for this for the pin, which was attached here uh, and then came out of here. They both attached to to the door locking mechanism inside. 
which I actually ended up unscrewing with um, with T30 T30 those T30 bolts that kind of help me uh, you know that kind of help me um, uh, disengage some of these locks. There's one inside you can see it right there, the green one. I don't know. I'm not sure that's focusing. But it's starting to rain, so I'm gonna have to take a break. So, after removing the lock bolt and uh, disengaging all of the linkages, I was able to get the panel out by um, uh, pretty much lifting. There's a couple of uh, locating dowels. This guy right here. This is the one. This is the one right there on the bottom. So you gotta you just gotta make sure that you pull them pull pull away pull the panel away so that it will come out. And then um, you kind of wiggle it. You gotta lift it up because this uh, this track or this this rig, this part of the regulator is kind of behind the metal. So you gotta lift it out uh, from behind from behind here, and then the lock itself is actually hanging on this on this flexible plastic uh, retainer, which bends far enough away. I mean, obviously, you gotta be gentle with it, but. You can kind of bend, you know, lift it up, and 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 uh, and. So I took the uh, latch mechanism out and connected it to the uh, connector outside. I'm, I just put it back in, but anyway, there's a couple of uh, the, like little retainers to kind of just hold it loosely in place. There's one here, and then this is the second one where um, you have to lift this this. A locking tab on the very bottom. You gotta lift it up, and then this will slide, slide off, and you can take the whole thing out. Unfortunately, um, here's the actuator. This is the actual lock uh, that unlocks and locks the door uh, or the latch. And for some reason, I, when I tested it, this will not operate. Uh, I tried to disassemble this latch assembly. However, these tabs are looks like they're just assembly tabs. But in fact, the um, the part here, the metal piece here, is riveted in into the, into it, and uh, I can't really take it apart uh, any further. So um, I'm gonna have to replace the entire thing, and uh, and uh, that should fix the problem.